Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah. Come, you guys, from California. Before I begin, I'm going to give all praise. It's most high. How about acknowledgement to the earthly mother? Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge how is shy. I pray the Most High blesses us this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past, and orders as of his current events that are currently have on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. As we get more understanding of where we came from, how far we've fallen, we get a better understanding of the plight of the Gentiles. We get a better understanding of the reasoning as to why they do and have done what they do. Why it was imperative for them to cut us off from the Most High. They have made us covet another land covet someone else's blessing in order to cut us off from the blessing that the Father had given us. To cut us off from the lands that was already, you know, agreed upon during the time of Noah after the deluge because we were all given a heritage. All given an inheritance. And we were told that if you take someone else's lands, that your children would pay the crop, pay the uh, pay the cost. They would be cursed. And see, since they've done that to us, and they know that their parent, uh, that their children are cursed, they tried their best to get us to do the same thing. So they could say, "Well, look, Father, I know we did. You know, we were coveting someone else's land, but they did the same thing too." That's why it's all been pushing the whole Africa, Africa, Africa thing. Which, look, there's beautiful lands over there. I'm sure parts of those are ours as well. But a big part of it, a big part of our blessing is Turtle Island right here. Many of the events that you read about in the Bible took place here. The other nations knew of the stories, but they were never able to come to the land. What you're going to see when we read right now is that after the flood, you know, uh, Noah and his three children were all centrally located. But over time, the other nations, the other groups of people would just move further and further and further away from the original source. They moved further and further from the government that Noah had established. So it would make sense that as they get further and further away from Noah and the righteous system and government that he had uh, set up, that the rest of the world, the people who move further away would get more and more barbaric. They would set up their own governments and they wouldn't necessarily follow the laws and, and the ways that Noah had set up. And if you think about it, when you look at the three parts, they uh, did not have the knowledge that the Americas had. When the Spaniards got the opportunity to come over here, they were amazed at the technological advances that were present here on our island, on Turtle Island. Why would that be? Because that would have been the original source after the flood. And the other nations who were further and further away would have less access to that knowledge. So now explains why as soon as the priests, the Catholic priests got here, they were burning records because they knew they were given the opportunity to, you know, pretty much take down our people. So they started trying to erase us. They tried to erase the fact that the Americas here were the original source and were going to be more advanced than anything else in the world because they'd moved further away from the source. So if you want to know who the people are, 
find out the people who don't have knowledge of who they are. Because that's what they did when that's what the priests did when they got here. They pretty much destroyed the lands, destroyed the history, so you wouldn't read it. So you wouldn't know who were the original people. So just like they destroyed the history of the land, they would also have to destroy the history of a particular people. That's why in Joel 2, the Most High says he's jealous for his land. But he also wants to redeem his people. So you got a land here of Turtle Island that all of a sudden they act as if, hey, man, there was just nobody here. The people that were here didn't, you know, they didn't write anything. They didn't have any knowledge. They didn't have anything. They didn't have any history. So therefore, it was okay for us to go ahead and take it and now establish people in certain countries and act as if they've always been here. So you want to find out who the real people of the book are, find out the people who don't have a history. Because just like they hid the history of these lands, they also hid the history of the true people because the Catholic Church wanted to take our place. And you can't take the place of the Most High's chosen people who have been endowed with knowledge and understanding way beyond anything of these Catholics, of these priests. So you would have to take them down in order to assume their position. So let's take a look at the book real fast. <clears throat> We're going to get into the remains of Japhet, being historical inquiry into the affinity and origin of European languages. Now we know, of course, the original European languages weren't going to be the ones you hear today, but that's another, another topic for another day. And remember now, this book here, is from 1767. Nine years before America even became a country. So just think of how the world was when this book was written. We were in slavery. We couldn't read. They had power still. They were still under their blessings at this time. So you got to understand that when you're reading these books... Look, they're, they're willing to put a lot more information in these books because they didn't have to worry about us reading it. They didn't have to worry about us saying, hey, you know what, man? Uh, we're those people. We're the people of the book. We're the ones that were here when you got here. They, they didn't have to worry about that. So therefore, they could put this information in these books. And then, you know, when we would get it back, because these people know that we're going to get it back, they'd be long gone. They'd be dead and buried and, and forgotten about by that time. But they're here again now. Their spirits, those spirits are here once again. So we're going to read a couple of pages out of this book here. Now, first thing we have to understand is that the scriptures are only concerned with one particular bloodline. But see, they have to use Paul to make it sound as if somehow bloodline doesn't matter. But the Bible is telling you that they are keeping track of one particular bloodline bloodline. This bloodline is going to be the one that the Most High is dealing with, the one the Most High is going to give information to, the one that the Most High is going to preserve, and it's going to be one particular bloodline that is going to fulfill the prophecies of the book. Because the Bible is dealing primarily with a particular bloodline. And then you Gentiles, it's like how you interact with that bloodline, that's how you get in the book. But it was never about Gentiles getting an opportunity to rule and reign and all of a sudden usurp the authority of this particular bloodline. But check this out. It says, we have no account of any children of Noah before the flood. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Let's actually look at the top. Uh, Moses intended only to be punctual in that line to which Abram belonged. Okay, so he's working about Abram, but then you work your way back. It's a particular bloodline. Let's continue now. We have no account of any children of Noah before the flood. Although uh, he was 500 years old before he begat the three sons <clears throat> who were to people the world after the flood. And yet it is not presumptuous to imagine he had, okay, since it may well be supposed by analogy between him and his ancestors. For his father, Lamech, 
<clears throat> was but 182 when he begat him. And his father, Methuselah, was about five years older when he was born. Enos also was about 65 when he begat Methuselah. And all these, both before and those long after the flood, lived to great ages, begetting sons and daughters after those children mentioned in Scripture to have been first born. The use I would make of this observation is by the uh, by the by, okay, to strengthen what I uh, have before hinted, as I would omit nothing that I thought of consequence towards elucidation such passages, as clearly show the consistency and truth of Holy Writ, which is that although Noah or any of his forefathers might have had children in numbers before, who had perhaps run into the um, enormous vices which brought on the divine wrath for their destruction, yet none were put into genealogical order, but those who were to continue in the line down to Abraham, Abram. And no doubt these were all righteous men in succession to one another down to Noah and from him to Abram. So we have to understand that the Old High is dealing with one particular bloodline. And why would that not be the case today? Because the Christian church says so? Because the Catholics and Christians say, oh no, bloodlines don't matter. Who do you think is waking up in these end days? Just because man tried to muddy the waters to the point that no one would know who's who. The Father knows who's who. And those are the ones that are awakening now. Those are the ones that are being called now. The ones that have a particular, follow a particular bloodline. Now, you Gentiles who are awakening were probably ones that were connected to this particular bloodline somehow. We don't know exactly how, but the Most High knows. And that's why some Gentiles awaken. That's why some Gentiles, you know, feel a, feel a calling to cleave to a certain people. Because that's what's in your spirit. So don't get it twisted and think that all of a sudden this particular bloodline has died off. And that because you don't know who they are, that the Most High doesn't either. Just like, just remember when the Most High sent the death angel to uh, Egypt during the plagues, the final one, this death angel was killing the firstborn of animals. You'd have a flock of animals and they all looked the same to you, but the Most High knew which ones were the firstborn and he killed those animals too. That was just another sign that you know that even though the people were all mixed up, I know who were mine and I know which ones are not mine. And I'm going to call out the ones. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to my children that he's called out here at the end. So I just wanted to touch on that because this bloodline is here today. And this bloodline is being empowered today. They are being given knowledge that you cannot contend with. They are being given knowledge and understanding that you cannot mess with. That you cannot even gainsay or say anything against. All you can do is shut your mouth and sit in the corner. That's why this is not going to be a top-down, one person is going to sit here and make all the decisions, and the rest of you are just going to hand over your check and just listen as a bunch of zombies to this particular person. That's what the churches had set up for control of the churches so that they could enjoy their blessings. The head of the true people is the Most High. And then it's the Holy Spirit who's been sent by the Most High to bring knowledge and understanding back to us. Now, as you can see, Gentiles don't have this. So they're stuck with, there's another war coming. Oh, Israel just attacked Lebanon. Oh, this is, get ready for this. Get ready for that. It's nothing but fear tactics. That's all that they have. Oh, get ready for the bricks. They're coming online. Oh, they're going to wait now till after the election. Oh, get ready for Kamala Harris. Oh, get ready for Donald. She's not black. She's not. Oh, you only, you know, you if you don't vote for Democrats, you ain't black. 
All the BS, all the same stuff, just to get you or get a rise up out of you because you're in a drunken stupor. And they need your energy. But they're not getting that from the most highest children anymore. No matter how big of an event you have, you are not going to get our power anymore. You're not going to get our blessing. You're not going to get our attention. None of that. So let's continue. <clears throat> Part eight right here, talking about the source. Okay. Uh, in the middle here, page eight. This I mentioned. Hold on, let me see. We want to start here. <clears throat> this I mention here as a proof that Noah governed them in a regular manner. Okay. And with that good uh, economy that a man of his years and experience might be expected to be a judge. Okay. Of especially to, if we consider him as a man highly favored by the most high and strictly revered by his children. And hence it is more than probable that he chalked out, um, um, he chalked out to each family his portion of the countries round about. Now we know that because we've read in Jubilees how he gave all three children their inheritance, their lands. See how the Most High already got us prepared for this information years ago. Okay, according to uh, family, his a portion of the countries round about. According to his good pleasure, and perhaps according to the scope of the blessing to two of his sons, and the curse to the other, while they were but yet they were yet but few in number. For it is not unlikely that at the time the time of this of his doing this, he had the spirit of prophecy upon him, and thereby was informed which was the place that was most proper and convenient for the fulfilling of the calamities that fell upon the Canaanites. When Joshua commanded and led the children of Israel, we must also further suppose, and that there that very naturally, that as these families increased, they departed farther off from the center where they were first established. And this is part about them branching off and moving further and further away. Okay? <clears throat> Okay. Hope we're still here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm hoping it's still recording right here at the same place. Um, and hence it is more than probable that he chalked out for family a portion of the country's roundabout according to his good pleasure, and perhaps according to the scope of the blessing to two of his sons and the curse of the other, while they were yet but few in number. For it is not unlikely that at the at the, um, at the time of his doing, he had the spirit of prophecy upon him. Okay, so we know about that going on down. The counties are going to fall upon the Canaanites when Joshua commanded and led the children of Israel. Right? We must also further suppose Okay, and that very naturally, that as these families increased, they departed farther off from the center, okay, where they were first established after the flood, which was now uh, the seat of Noah's government. And that still, as they grew more numerous, they, re they removed uh, yet farther off, radiating as it were from the central seat until they had uh, formed a, at length separate heads and governments. Now it makes sense. You move further ahead, further away, further away. You're getting away from the source. You're getting away from the knowledge. You're getting away from the understanding. And you're becoming more and more barbaric. As, these, you, as you can see, these Gentiles right now have no understanding. They have been cut off from the knowledge of the Most High. They have been cut off from having access to our people. Yeah, physically, we're, we're right around each other. Physically, we're, but spiritually, we are oceans apart. You know, mentally, we are oceans apart because they, they, the Most High is not dealing with them. The Most High has raised us up. As, like we said, we, he's given us all this information. We're asking them to defend themselves and we get crickets because 
you know, mentally and spiritually, they're gone. They're absolutely done. Okay, so let's continue. So off uh, of their own. And by a very rapid increase, after the first 60 years, overspread a great part of the earth, even before the death of Noah, who lived 350 years after his first establishment. For it cannot be supposed, with the least show of probability, that they could have found room for any length of time in the same place or have ever returned from their own places to one, okay, from whence they departed, already sufficiently stocked and daily increasing with young inhabitants. So once they got moved away, they weren't coming back, which would make sense because, you know, the Most High kept us holy and separate. He had these oceans that were here that, you know, pretty much kept us all separated. They formed their own governments in different parts of the world, but they did not have access to the source anymore. That's why their calendars were off. That's why they're considered on the 1611, you know, Bible. It's like after they came, they got the most high brought them back over here. All of a sudden their calendar got fixed. They got knowledge of the stars. They got knowledge of calendar. They got knowledge of many things that they did not have before. Astronomy, astrology. Because they were cut off from the source. Okay? So, so he lived 350 years after the first establishment, right? For uh, it cannot be supposed with the least show of probability that they could have found room for any length of time in the same place or have ever returned from their own places to one, okay, from whence they departed, already sufficiently stocked and daily uh, increasing with young inhabitants. We are now to consider the country where Mount Ararat is situated. It is said that Noah's Ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. Now, we, I said, again, they're trying to force everything to be over there. We know that Noah built his Ark out of, was it, gopher wood? And that is native to Turtle Island. So we know all these things were happening here. So why wouldn't the Most High just make sure that the Ark came back and rested back over here? where everything began, where everything started, the best lands, and then move from there. And you can just tell by the fact that when these people came over here, these Europeans came over here, they were just overwhelmed with what they were seeing because these lands were way more advanced. The things they were seeing, the buildings, the pyramids, the knowledge, the understanding, the little bit that they tell us, the giants that they found here, Cholula, the greatest pyramid ever, the largest pyramid, I'm sorry, I should say, all these other pyramids that are all over here, right? All of this information that they were, that was over here, because this was the source. This was the fourth part that they were not allowed to come to, okay? So some authors out of caprice and others from prejudice to the credit of the scriptures, have endeavored to place these mountains in parts of the world very remote from the real situation, which exactly what they've been doing. Trying to, you know, make it seem as if everything happened in the three parts, and then all of a sudden they came over here and there was nothing here. And we already know that that's not true. Okay? So I have endeavored to place these mountains in parts of the world very remote from the real situation, and indeed very unfit, okay, for that great scene that was to be trans, uh, transacted in the migration of the children of Noah and in the peopling of the nations all over the earth. Now, you know, if they want to say that so-called where Ish is at today was the best lands and that's where everything started, then that would make, that, that was, do you think that Israel over there in the Mediterranean is the seat of knowledge? You think all of a sudden people got there and they got so much smarter that that was where all the information is? That's why they try to say that, Oh, Israel, today they have all these technological advances and they're always trying to fulfill these scriptures because they know that the true Israelite land was going to be the land of Shem, of course, is going to be the best lands and is going to be more advanced than anything because remember that particular bloodline dwells there and that bloodline was given knowledge and understanding above everyone else, beginning with, you know, well, of course, with Adam and Seth, but, you know, Enoch got a lot of information and passed that down to his posterity as well. Now I'm going to give you a little taste of the information that's going to be coming out about 
the things of these lands here in, in Turtle Island and how they correlate with Egypt. But the thing is, is that Egypt was not, Egypt was established by our people over here in Turtle Island. I, uh, they got their information from our people. We already know that Abraham taught the Egyptians about the stars, about astrology and astronomy. But trust me, we taught them way more than just that. But that is still something that has been hidden. They don't want the world to realize that us Hebrews have been teaching everybody. Just like the Celts taught the Greeks. Avarice taught Pythagoras. But of course, they keep that information hidden as well. They want you to know that the great Celt Avaris was the one that Pythagoras was getting his information from. That's why they get rid of Acts 29, because then Paul goes, you know, up there to England and Ireland and he meets with the Druids and he tells you that those are our people. Those are Israelites as well. As you can see, there's a pattern of just hiding information because these um, these Christians, Constantine Christians and Catholics want to usurp our authority. Okay. I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to go to another book right now. So let's go there real quick. <clears throat> Queen Mu. Right here. I also want to show you like these people, oh, these Egyptians, there's so much information about how they copied Turtle Island, how our people actually went over there, migrated there, and gave them knowledge and understanding. And the world is like, hey, we're good with giving it to the Egyptians. We're good with giving credit to the Egyptians because we don't want people to realize that the real source was over here in the Americas. That that's where Noah had established his seat of authority, and that's where the true knowledge lies. And as you get further and further away from this area, barbarism takes over because that's where the Gentiles are able to have authority. And as you can tell, when they have authority, the whole world mourns, the lands mourn, the animals mourn, the people mourn. So right here, let us revert to our inquiry concerning the customs observed at funerals by the Mayas and Egyptians. We will examine one or two so remarkable that they cannot be honestly attributed to mere coincidence. We have seen that in Mayak, which is another way of saying Mayan, the Mayan lands, as in India, uh, Chaldea, Egypt, and many other countries, a certain kind of ape was held sacred. Its worship being, no doubt, closely related to that of ancestors. But... How, can, how came the Cenophilus to be connected in Egypt with the rites of the dead? This species of monkey is not a native of Egypt, but is of Central America, where it is very abundant. So how in hell would the Egyptians have knowledge of this monkey that is not native to Egypt, but is native to Central America. And there's a whole lot of them in Central America because we went worldwide teaching everyone. Our people went worldwide teaching everyone. But once the Gentiles got the opportunity to rule and reign, they weren't going to admit that. But they already know. They already know. That's why they're here listening now because the spirit is not dealing with them. And the only way for them to get knowledge and understanding of anything is to listen to us. Now they're doing it on the down low, but we already know what's up because they don't get this knowledge on their own. I don't get this knowledge on my own. I am guided by the Most High and the Holy Spirit. So again, but how came to uh, how came the Cenophilus to be connected to in Egypt? with the rites of the dead. This species of monkey is not a native of Egypt, but is of Central America, where it is very abundant. These, if these lands never had any connection with each other, then how come they're doing the same funeral rites here and in many other places? Since Thoth, the god of wisdom and letters, 
was the reputed uh, preceptor of Isis and Osiris. He was supposed to uh, hold the office of scribe in a minty, where his business was to uh, note, note down the actions of the dead and present or read the record of them to Osiris while sitting as judge of the lower regions. Thoth in that capacity is represented uh, is represented as a sinophilus, sin, monkey, in a sitting posture. He is thus frequently portrayed seated on the top of the balance of the judgment uh, in the judgment scenes. So again, they're getting this information from somewhere where a lot of these monkeys reside and these monkeys come from Central America. This is barely going to just tip, be the tip of the iceberg. Wait till you hear about the jewelry and everything else and how that's connected to the Bible and the things that they were doing over here in Central America. So I just wanted to give you a little taste of what's to come. You know, yeah, we'll have our lives and spend our time together and everything else. I said, but I need to use this format to bring the knowledge so you can see these pages for yourself. You know, so it's difficult to do it all during and alive and whatever else is good to come together and congregate. We're going to try to do that tomorrow. I said, but it's going to be more videos coming just for you guys to listen to and see and get this information. This is just the tip of the iceberg. And like I said, the other nations, they can't touch this. Like MC Hammer, right? You can't touch this. They can't, they can't deal with this. They can't get with this because the most High is not dealing with them. So you want to know who's who? You want to know who the Most High is dealing with? Test the spirit. Who has the spirit of prophecy? Who is the spirit of knowledge, understanding? At this time, at the end days, knowledge is to be increasing. Psalms 83, they want to keep the knowledge at a low level. They don't want it to increase at all because as it increases, it exposes them more and more. All praise is high. How about? Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is Holy Spirit? Acknowledge the Shai. Shalom. 